A Total War Saga Troy follows the legendary 20-year conflict between the kingdoms of Troy and Mycenaean Greece, known as the Trojan War. Combining Total War's unique blend of grand, turn-based empire management and spectacular real-time battles, Troy explores this epic conflict from both the Achaean and Trojan perspectives, peeling back the layers of myth and legend to reveal the realities that may have inspired them. Glorious Menelaus may have already seen his best fighting days, but the King of Sparta is the perfect choice for the strategists who prefer to utilize diplomacy and political maneuvering to realize their ambitions. The wider his network of allies spreads, the more possibilities he has in his toolbox. The King can pull rank and call to arms any unit within the roster of his allies to an army recruiting anywhere. This kind of recruitment may take longer, but it also gives Menelaus' roster unparalleled depth, flexibility, and variety. That means you can make use of older brother Agamemnon's heavyweight elite units on the battlefield, so long as your empire's economy can bear the burden. By setting war coordination targets with your military and defensive allies, you can act as the puppet master, setting a play in motion like a chess grandmaster. The scale of the fight ahead is huge, but you're not alone in the great war against the Trojans. As Menelaus, if you get line of sight, as well as the necessary funds, you can even form Spartan colonies and raise settlements without having to send an army. It's not just gold you'll be spending in Troy. The resource economy in Troy has been overhauled to include five different stockpiled resources. Each of these are found in varying degrees of rarity throughout the campaign map and are essential to building a strong and dynamic empire. If you want to know more, check out the linked playlist. If we take a look at Menelaus' faction summary, we can see the faction effects, which can reflect both Menelaus' long and short-term achievements in his campaign so far. As the champion of Sparta, the lifeblood of your empire are your resources, and that goes for every faction in Troy. That means certain locations will have multiple levels of strategic importance to different factions. The bronze-hungry armies of Agamemnon will require a number of bronze-forged settlements in order to reach his full potential. The varying rosters and requirements of the different factions reflect an opportunity for enterprising traders and scheming warlords alike. One of the five resources, gold, is very rare and is reserved for the most powerful options in games, such as elite units, diplomatic barters, and Asian actions, which are reworked from recent Total War titles. Agents are characters which are recruited to carry out specific actions during the campaign movement phase and cannot fight on the battlefield. There are three types of agents. We're focusing on priestesses, but we also have spies, as well as envoys, at our disposal. Priestesses can ease the fears of the local populace, raise nearby allies' morale, or diminish the fighting spirit of our enemies. Much like their agent counterparts, epic agents carry out specific actions during the campaign movement phase. However, these units have a limited lifespan and can only carry out one powerful action before they need to be re-recruited. For example, the Gorgon terrifies enemy armies and can reduce the garrison of a targeted settlement drastically. We'll definitely be making use of this one later. Menelaus is my epic hero. From the backbone of the Iliad, he is the most powerful single entity unit I have access to. These individuals have unique skill trees inspired by the ancient texts. Heroes, on the other hand, act as army-leading generals and have multiple subclasses, with differing skill trees which push their roles in more nuanced directions. Heroes are people in their own right and have a variety of traits that dictate how to get the most out of them. I've promoted Anhialos here, as he's a defender, I've a heavily armored soldier with a preference for prolonged combat. Not only this, he has the warlike personality, ensuring he is well motivated to defend and expand my lands whilst Menelaus seeks vengeance. Menelaus' campaign map progression is unique. Unlike other Danan factions, his gameplay is more likely to set sail toward the isolated island of Crete. In this playthrough, we have chosen the path of conquering the fortress stronghold of Knossos. Its strategic value cannot be understated. If you can wrestle control of it, you can use it as a menacing forward base from which to rain down armies on the Trojans. Thanks to Menelaus' call to arms mechanic, he has the strategic diversity to take on anyone across the Aegean coast. from the Rhodeans with their range superiority, to Sarpedon and his valiant Lycians. This roster is not cheap to muster, but flaunts unmatched diversity. With this freedom of choice, Menelaus allows you to conquer Greece as you see fit. The oceans isolating Crete are vast, 
which makes whoever rules here greatly benefit from the teachings of Poseidon, the god of the sea. Divine Will is a dynamic take on faction customization and specialization where players can choose from a pantheon of well-known deities from Greek mythology in order to provide a wide range of benefits to their campaign. Divine Will is a dynamic take on faction customization and specialization, where players can choose from a pantheon of well-known deities from Greek mythology in order to provide a wide range of benefits to their campaign. Reaching the highest level of any cult allows players to unlock unique epic mythological units and agents that can significantly improve your chances of conquering the Bronze Age Mediterranean. Following the likes of Hera, Zeus, and Aphrodite helps with managing provinces, population, and production while following the gods of war and strategy, Ares and Athena will naturally yield improvements in battle, ferocity, and command. Apollo and Poseidon complete the circle, with their domains covering more intricate aspects of the game, such as divine will, agents, and research. Poseidon's cult are obsessed with reaping the benefits of the sea. First order, this means efficient travel across it. Further commitment to Poseidon will yield much improved fishing techniques, fueling the hungry war machine Menelaus' ambitions require. I've also opted to devote resources toward the Cult of Athena, which will give access to the Gorgon's one-time ability to devastate armies and garrisons. However, commitment via the Divine Will system is not permanent, so splitting your commitment to each Greek god will gate your access to these units, establishing greater strategic consequences for following each path. Our Truth Behind the Myth approach has allowed us to draw from a multitude of mythology's most renowned aspects and include them in Troy as historically grounded representations of what their true form might have been. This approach has allowed us to expand unit diversity by including unique warriors to the roster whilst adding an extra layer of tactical versatility to the conflict. Mythical units like the Cyclops could only be obtained at the pinnacle of the Divine Will mechanic to help enforce the mythical rarity of these units. Let's jump into a battle. Battle maps in Troy are designed with gameplay variety in mind. Infantry have three weight classes, light, medium, and heavy. And the differences between them are accentuated from previous Total War titles. You won't be able to use Plan A in every battle, so you'll have to either think ahead or think on your feet. I had to use my quick shielded units to keep the missile units off my main army. Battle may start off as skirmishes, opportunities for each army to flaunt their superior soldiers or strategies, but they'll usually devolve into massive face-offs between the two main forces. As flanking is very important in Troy, I locked horns with the AI, constantly attempting to outflank whilst countering their opportunistic advances. Pure chaos eventually ensues, units falling back and fighting to their death. Some flanks may totally collapse, leaving gaping holes in your best laid plans. Mythical units in battle facilitate deeper and more diverse gameplay. For example, the Cyclops, although equipped with low armor, dominates close quarters combat, and his presence alone can force enemy soldiers to rethink the orders of their commander. Troy is free to keep forever, but only if you claim it on release day. Subscribe so you don't miss out.